Thank you very much, Mike. Um, we'll start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Spirit, and they shall be created. Amen. Shall be the of the Let us pray. O God, who instructed the hearts of thy faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by that same Spirit to be truly wise, and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Very good. Welcome, everyone. And um, I will first make a presentation about the spiritual exercises and some things Father Hardin uh, talked about, the, uh, said about them. Um, but then I, if anyone thinks of some useful question, um, I may answer a couple of questions toward the end uh, until we are done with all the time. All right? So um, the first thing is that um, we, we are all called to holiness, as you well know. And um, that is a truth that has been taught by many saints, but also it has been reassured or reaffirmed by the uh, Second Vatican Council. And therefore, um, it is important to have good means of sanctification in today's world. We need to know how each one of us can grow in holiness, come, come close to God. And it's, everything is based in the Gospel itself, when our Lord himself said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfection that does not mean um, a physical or spiritual uh, standard that is equal for everyone, and therefore perfection is whatever this is, and we all have to uh, be up to that. Perfection is that um, for each one, that ideal that God has uh, in his mind when he created us. Um, he thought of us from all eternity, and when he created us, he had an idea of what each one of us should be. So, in our lives, we're in this, in this world, and we have to try to attain that, whatever uh, that is, whatever God's will is it, for me in my life. And um, there, there will definitely be different uh, levels of perfection, or different uh, types of sanctity, and uh, sometimes I... I am amazed at the examples of the saints because you have saints for every, every type of person that you can imagine, right? Um, I always remember one uh, saint, I don't, nobody knows him, so I don't even know the name, so I, never mind the name, that he, he was a priest. And, um, you know, sometimes they show, suppose St. Maximilian Colby with his um, uh, uniform of uh, the prison or some other... Uh, saints with uh, their habit or the instrument of their martyrdom. And there was this one priest that was like that <laughs> in his, in his uh, holy card or something. He was like that. So I wonder what, what happened with this saint. So um, um, it, it, it struck a chord for me because I, you, I taught at the university with a crowd more or less like this but without the microphone. So after a year I lost my voice. And I just couldn't recover it. I couldn't re recuperate the, the voice. So um, I always had, I had to speak like that with a microphone very close. So everybody had to hear. I had to listen carefully. So this saint, it, it seems that something similar happened to him, that he had lost his voice. So he could only hear confessions. So that's why he, he, they put him like this, because he was always in the confessional, hearing confessions, <laughs> <laughs> right? So he became a saint, like that, right? And... Uh, so there's a little bit for, um, for everyone. Or other saints, like St. Benedict Labre, who was a, like a, a beggar, uh, just homeless beggar, and that's how he sanctified him, his life. Um, so well, there's sanctity for every kind of person, and that's encouraging, should be encouraging for everyone, so that we, we don't necessarily have to imitate the exact examples of other saints but we have to see what is the will of God 
for us, for each one of us. And um, so each one has to seek holiness, not necessarily the type of a canonized saint, but holiness, um, meaning that uh, image, that idea that God has of me. And that will imply to uproot my vices, right, that each one has to know and learn what those are, and plant virtues uh, according to my capacities and personality and talents, and be charitable and humble, which we can all, uh, everyone can be humble and everyone can be charitable, um, although in different ways and different um, manifestations of that charity. So, so that's what we have to seek. Now, this world needs saints in that sense, right? Um, we won't some, some people say, oh, we need uh, another group of senators or someone else in the, in the Supreme Court and uh, we need another, nobody, I'm sure nobody thought about another president, but um, <laughs> maybe that could help, I don't know. Uh, anyway, but sometimes some people think that and it's not that which will uh, solve the problems of the world. Mm -hmm. um, it can do a lot of good to have uh, virtuous men in, 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 in office, definitely. But that doesn't happen if, there's not, if there are no holy or at least virtuous Catholics and virtuous families and virtuous people and virtuous priests and virtuous bishops and everything, right? So each one has to seek holiness and that's what the world needs. The, need, the world needs saints if we want to do anything good for the society. So, um, and sometimes it seems you're talking to a wall or something because uh, many people, I, I, w I want to be a policeman and I want to be a fireman, I want to be a marine. Why? Because I want to get the job done. I want to save the world from all its troubles. Well, I can tell you what you can do <laughs> <laughs> if you want to save many people, you know, um, but not everybody will listen. Um, but definitely, uh, being a saint is what will bring more salvation to the world, which will eventually uh, convert the world, right? Sanctity. And um, so, Father Hardin um, put it in simple words, um, ordinary Catholics, he said, will not survive. Ordinary bishops, this I'm quoting Father Hardin, okay? Uh, any complaints? <laughs> Go to Father Hardin. <laughs> so, ordinary Catholics will not survive. Ordinary bishops will not survive. Ordinary priests and religious will not survive. Ordinary fathers and mothers will not survive. Only heroic Catholics. I don't say, I don't say will survive, but only heroic Catholics can re-Christianize one paganized nation after another, including our own. Mm -hmm. What this means, he continues, what this means, therefore, is that there must be heroic Catholicity, which is my name for sanctity. Why? Otherwise, what is happening in so many countries over the centuries will happen to our own. We need more than ever saints to convert a paganized America. So then the question comes, how can I, a weak, sinful person, ignorant in spiritual things, suddenly become holy? How, what, how can I do that? How can I get to holiness uh, when I have no idea what holiness is about? When I don't know what God wants of me? How can I achieve that holiness? So there are several means um, that we can put into practice. Um, in Miles Christi, that's uh, the order to which I belong, um, we are uh, trained or taught precisely to provide such means of holiness. Right? Um, we try to provide these means of holiness, particularly to you know, young people, high school and college students, but by extension we do it for families and everyone, every, any lay person, right? Uh, so spiritual direction, regular confession, Catholic and spiritual, Catholic spiritual and intellectual formation, right? And above all, a very um, good means of uh, growing in holiness are the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And we will focus now on this latter means, that we say, of sanctification, right? Um, and that's why Father Hardin, who said those words that I read, 
um, was so intense, so uh, firm about not only providing retreats that would be good, but providing the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, faithful as much as we can, right, to the, um, the principles and the uh, doctrines and the method provided by St. Ignatius of Loyola in that book of the spiritual exercises. So, um, what are the spiritual exercises? We'll see mm, some things um, about the retreat. To begin with, just for you to know what I'm talking about, these are the spiritual exercises, right? So it's, it's a, a book that St. Ignatius wrote um, that it's not just a novel or it's not a, something that you can read cover to cover. Um, we'll explain a bit more what this is about. Um, so in the same way that we have, and this is what St. Ignatius says this, in the same way that we have um, physical exercises so that you know, we can work out, we uh, lift weights or walk or go biking, um, any type of workout in order to have a, a healthy uh, body, in order to be healthy, in order to um, be able to do the daily activities that we have to do and not just uh, disappear in a chair because we're all only sitting down. In the same way, uh, we have spiritual exercises or if you want to put it in easy terms for um, those who've never heard of spiritual things, we could say a workout for the soul. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there are no weights to lift and there are no uh, tracks to run, but there are similar things for the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. So, what St. Ignatius says is, well, in the same way that you can walk or run in order to do physical exercises, for the soul, you examine your conscience, right? Or you contemplate the mysteries of the life of Christ. Or you can uh, try to understand the truths of your faith better and can take some conclusions to your life, for your life. Or look at the mysteries of the life of Christ, suppose the cross of Christ. You, you look at the mystery of, the, of Christ crucified and try to apply this to your life. What does it mean? And that is an exercise of the soul. You can be kneeling, uh, if, if possible. It's always better to pray kneeling, right? So, and our soul is exercising itself, and it's growing. Although you may say, well, I don't take any, anything from this. Well, you think you may not be taking anything from it, but you are. What happens is that you can't, you know, you can't look at the mirror and, <laughs> and do, uh, see how, how big my muscles are, because it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then also because one of those muscles is humility, right? So, by the grace of God, you won't be thinking, oh, I'm much virtuous now after three years of doing the spiritual exercises. So, hopefully you will know yourself better and, and recognize that, uh, that we have a long way to go. So, those are, that's what spiritual exercises, the general term, that's what it means. Um, Unfortunately, the people, and we many times are included, but people in the world dedicate so much to their worldly life, right? So much effort that if a, a businessman or a, you know, an actor or an actress or a model would dedicate all the time they dedicate for their uh, health and their body and their business for their spiritual life, Right? They will be they will be holy, right? And we will all be holy. We dedicated just a fifty percent of the time we dedicate for things of the world, but to grow in virtue. Hmm? Um, so Saint Ignatius of Loyola says a little bit more about what the spiritual exercises are. He says in the book at the beginning, he says, By this name of spiritual exercises is meant every way of examining one's conscience, of meditating of contemplating, of praying vocally and mentally, and of performing other spiritual actions, as we will say later, for, and here's where he, he puts the example, you thought it was mine, but it's not mine, uh, for as strolling or walking and running, are, they used to do a workout in that time, uh, for strolling, walking and running are bodily exercises, 
So every way of preparing and disposing the soul to rid itself of all the disordered tendencies and after it's rid of that, to seek and find the divine will as to the management of one's own life for the salvation of the soul is called a spiritual exercise. So that, those are the spiritual exercises. So in brief, this, the spiritual exercises are a combination of meditations, contemplations, spiritual notes, recommendations, and other exercises of the spiritual life. They were put together in this book by St. Ignatius of Loyola so that the faithful could do a spiritual retreat. They would have to be guided by a director according to the method and the meditations found in that book. So those are, that's what are the uh, spiritual exercises. And they have a specific purpose. It's not, um, so today you have retreats of any kind, right? Even in businesses they have retreats. They, they go out to an island and they have a good time. <laughs> they go golfing. Um, so... Yeah, some, one, sometimes you wonder, why don't we do that kind of retreat, right? But, uh, and become holy that way, but it's not the case. So, um, these spiritual exercises have a specific purpose. So, they, are, they have a goal, something that we have to acquire. So St. Ignatius has an idea. And what is that idea? Um, St. Ignatius puts, uh, uh, writes it at the beginning of, his, of, of the retreat. It's to find the will, the will of God without being swayed or deceived by our inordinate attachments and affections to things that, or ideas, sometimes we have an idea. Some people say, oh, I think very strongly that I have to do this. Good. That's what you think. That totally agree. That's your strong idea or perception that you have to do. Not necessarily, that's not necessarily the will of God. Um, because we may be swayed by our own personal ideas uh, in order to do that, and we may want to do that and not be attentive to the will of God. Mm? So, in order to find and do the will of God, we need to pray without being deceived by our own inordinate attachments or, uh, or, or wrong tendencies, right? So he says this at the beginning of the retreat. The spiritual exercises have as their purpose the conquering of oneself and the regulation of one's life in such a way that no decision is made under the influence of any inordinate attachment so that we can be freed from all these personal likings and once we are freed from that, we can see, or hopefully we'll be able to see more clearly what God wants me to do. Right? So, um, suppose many people, I mean, this is something constant, because what, how, what's the relationship between that and holiness? That holiness is precisely to do throughout all our lives the will of God. So, we, can't do the, we cannot do the will of God if we are attached to our own personal will. We will not be holy if we do not do the will of God. Right? But sometimes there are some inspirations that we may have or other things and movements in the soul that make us think, well, maybe this is what I should be doing. But then the following day there's this other idea that tells me, that, well, maybe that is what I should be doing. Or some person says, oh, you know what? You should be doing this. Oh, the... It's the word of God speaking to me. Well, not necessarily, right? Um, or I, I turn the corner and I see a sign that says, do this, and, oh, that's the will of God. Not necessarily. So, we have to find the will of God without being swayed or deceived by our own personal opinions, by our own personal likings, by our own personal ideas. So, that's a goal, as you see, it's a, it's a very high ideal and very necessary for all of us if we want to get to heaven and if we want to be holy. That we may do the spiritual exercises in order to remove those personal 
likings, attachments, or desires that we may have. And once we have removed that, then we can do or find the will of God more easily and then do it. So there's like three steps, right? You need to remove the attachments that you may have. You need to see what the will of God is. See the will of God. And then do it, right? Because not everybody who sees the will of God does it. I have experienced so. And myself and many others, right? That we see the will of God and we may not want to do it. Mm -hmm. So they were... So that's, that's, the, that's the book of the spiritual exercises. It has a set of meditations. It sets some principles at the beginning. Then it has some meditations. Then it has some other reflections and suggests some conclusions, some etc. In order to, little by little, find the will of God for our life. So they were originally written by St. Ignatius of Loyola to be practiced throughout 30 days. Um, approximately, and they were divided into four periods, so I'm going to describe a little bit what the spiritual exercises are. What is, what, why are they a unique retreat? Why don't we call it just a retreat, right? Um, what is so special about them? Um, so they, they were divided, in, they are divided in four sections or periods, which St. Ignatius called weeks, and if you have 30 days, then each week should be around seven days to eight days uh, of length. And sometimes it could be more or less. Each week has a, um, a set of meditations with a specific topic mm, of uh, consideration. Um, we're going to describe it now. And also, it has a, each week has a purpose. So in this week, we try to obtain a certain spiritual fruit. And then in this other week, another spiritual type of spiritual fruit. And then in this other week, another type of spiritual fruit. So they're all spiritual things, but are of, of different types, right? So we really experience the, let's say, the richness and the fruitfulness of a, a sound spiritual life in the spiritual exercises. So the first week, for example, uh, focuses on something that nobody likes to say too much today, but focuses on our sins uh, or our inordinate inclinations or vices, right? Different uh, realities of the spiritual life that are negative. Let's put it this way. Suppose that you have, uh, you ha you're, you're moving into, another, into a house and you like to have a wonderful backyard, right? So you, you buy the house and then you go to the backyard and it's a mess. <laughs> there's stones, there's uh, some dead animals there and there's... Uh, <laughs> You know, all these weeds and uh, a tree that fell and it's like lying there and it's all rotten and so forth. So, okay, you need to do something about this. So where are you going to start? Well, you can't start by planting tomatoes, <laughs> right? Because then you still have the tree there, still you have the... Um, <laughs> I get distracted. I'm sorry. I'm not so good at these things. <laughs> so, um, so we we have to first take the bigger the bigger problem. Okay, this tree here, right? We need to remove the tree, and then okay, we need to remove this big boulder that is here, and then uh, take out the weeds, and then um, yeah, etc. You know, turn around the the they yeah, have good the dead animals, right? <laughs> They're smelling there and. Uh, so uh, we do all that, and then we have, okay, more or less cleared everything, and then second step. Well, now we're going to design a nice backyard, how we're going to put it, and plant the seeds, and so forth. So the first week has to be to remove those ugly things. So you can't, you can't try to start your backyard mm, not talking about the rotten tree that is there because you don't like to talk about it, you know? So, okay, we need to address that, take the tree out. So, the first week focuses on that, the purification of the soul, you know, the, so about our sins, vices, and then some realities that are very important for us to, be, to, to have a better awareness of sin and of our spiritual life. For example, death, the reality of death, one day we're going to die, or the reality of judgment, after we die, 
guess what? There's a judgment, right? And uh, you want to be well prepared for that. And if you are successful in that judgment, you, there still could be purgatory, right? If you're unsuccessful in that judgment, there is hell. So the medita there's a meditation on hell, there's a meditation, etc., about death and so forth. Second week, so the, the fruit of that week is to obtain a knowledge of, our, of ourselves, of, our, of the disorder of sin and the, the different other northern attachments. The second week focuses on the life of Christ, uh, the reform of our life now, and the um, finding or discerning the will of God for our life in whatever stage of our life that we may be, right? So, of course, the most important uh, point in our life where we need to discern well the will of God is, of course, the choice of a state in life or one's vocation, but that's not the only thing, right? So... Some people think it's, oh, it's just to discern one's vocation. No, it's not just for that. Although that's a very important decision in life because it sets you on this path or in that path. But, um, but even once one has chosen one's, or one's vocation, uh, once one has um, discerned the will of God for one's life, there are many other moments in life where we have to discern the will of God. Um, sometimes... The, the decisions can be more strenuous later, right? But, um, so to discern the will of God, to reform our life according to the model that we all should have, that is Jesus Christ, right? So they are centered in Jesus Christ and the life of Christ and the mysteries of Christ and the saints in as much as they refer to Christ. So there we have the call of Christ the King to follow him, the call to holiness and the call to imitate him according to the life of the gospel, and the discernment of, of uh, the will of God, the discernment of spirits, the meditation of two standards, or two banners. It's very, very important. And, by the way, uh, it talks about a reality that is so important today, that is the existence of the devil, right? And that he wants to lead us all to hell. Uh, simple as that. So, the spiritual exercise present that. The third week, the passion of Christ, and the fruit of that... Uh, um, uh, week is to be united to Christ in his sufferings and to embrace as our own the sufferings that Christ has suffered for my sake. The fourth week, the resurre resurrection of Christ as a fruit, the, the joy, the interior joy that we should receive from uh, the joy that is of cr in Christ and the glory that is in Christ because of his resurrection and eventually or finally to grow in the, in the love of God through this meditation that is very important, the, the contemplation to attain the love of God. A little bit about the, spirit, the history of the spiritual exercises. Um, St. Ignatius of Loyola, or Inigo, as he was called, that was his name, Inigo, um, Inigo, whatever you want to say it. Um, later, he used the term uh, Ignatius, right? He was born in Lo Loyola in Spain uh, in 1491. He was baptized and confirmed. He had a strong faith, but he didn't always live it out. He was not seeking holiness, uh, we could say. And in some occasions, he, it is said that he um, did grave sins, right? He doesn't say exactly what they are, but as uh, in that time there were, apparently he was even accused of murdering someone uh, at one point in his life. So... Um, he was not a saint, let's say, uh, what we would call a saint today. Um, he joined the military. He, he, he was very noble in his service to the king. Um, but in a battle in Pamplona against the French, he was wounded uh, seriously in his leg by a cannonball um, that ruined his, his knee, his leg, so, uh, against the French. So he, while in recovery, he asked to read, read some books, he has some read. Sorry, he has some books to read about um, knighthood and the things that he, the novels that he were coming that time. But there were none. Uh, in the family he was staying, he uh, in his house, he they only had the Life of Christ. Of course, there were not printed books as they are today or internet. So they had these couple of books. They had the Life of Christ and the Life of the Saints. So he read these and he he started realizing how he was sometimes attracted to those things. Sometimes he was still attracted to the things of the world. And that's how he converted, little by little, was the process of conversion. 
And um, he finally decided to give up the military and serve God in some way through uh, his own holiness, through uh, trying to lead others to holiness too. So important thing of all this is that how God um, can bring uh, sinners to salvation and sanctification, right? In a, in a most unique way, right? He, um, if we had met St. Ignatius of Inigo, right, when he was, uh, at one point they say that he was uh, attacked by a gang, right? And he was alone with swords, right? And that he was about to kill him, right? And they were about to kill him. So had it not been for those who tried to stop the fight, Someone would have killed someone, right? And uh, so he was not the like a pious um, person that you would encounter praying the rosary in, in, in his chapel, right? So he was pretty tough, and and uh, so we can we can see how God uh, can bring a conversion through His grace, and that's the reality of grace is very present in the spiritual exercises, and we'll talk about. That briefly. Um, so while he while he uh, wanted to serve God, he decided one of his first resolutions was to go on a pilgrimage of penance and prayer to Jerusalem. And in his way there, he passed through a town uh, called uh, Manresa, and uh, and there he had a very um, unique experience that was a interior revelation of the, all the truths of faith. He said that uh, next to a river called Cardonel. Um, he was there and he, his mind suddenly was inspired by God so that he learned in that time more, he says, that about the faith than what he had learned if he had studied all his life. So it was a gift of God. And then um, he also, in, he, he stayed at a cave and did a lot of penance and he had also very many other inspirations that he doesn't say exactly what they are. But we know that those inspirations became the heart, the core of what we have in the spiritual exercises. Um, then later he may have added more details or information um, to those main basic uh, truths. So that's, what, uh, the spirit, that's where the spiritual exercises originated, in that uh, town of Manresa, where he uh, remained. And it was, again, these things of providence. He was going to go to a particular city but he didn't want to go to that city because people knew him from his times in the, in the military. And he didn't want them to give him any honor and say, oh, here's Captain Inigo de Loyola. You know? And so he said, instead of going there, I'm going to go to this little town. And in that little town, God was waiting right, to um, inspire him with this uh, jewel of the Catholic faith. Right? that are the spiritual exercises. So mm, we never know how God can guide our paths and uh, where he's waiting for us in, in a most humble place because that little town was a dilapidated town at that time. Uh, it was a time from the time of the, uh, town from the time of the Romans and was unimportant in that particular moment. So that's how uh, our Lord, through the hands of Our Lady, that's what St. Ignatius says, that through the hands of Our Lady, he received those main basic uh, truths that we have in the spiritual exercises. Why should anyone then today attend the spiritual exercises? By the way, the 30-day retreats um, that were done directed personally. So St. Ignatius would direct this one person for 30 days, uh, giving them the, the basic meditations and the methods that are in this retreat. Um, then with time, more people and more people wanted to practice them. So. Uh, they couldn't do it individually. So you would have a group of people come together with a director or a preacher um, and have a retreat. And sometimes there are 40 people or 40 women or 40 men doing these retreats right at a time. And w because of the modern world, 30 days are not always available. So different ways of approaching the same retreat have been presented through the history and the tradition of the spiritual exercises. So a very common way that we do in Miles Christi is a weekend retreat, right? So we start uh, Friday at 4.30, we end, up on, we end on, on Sunday, 4.30, of course, instead of having all the meditation, because in a 30-day retreat, you would have five meditations a day, right? And um, still 30 days. So instead of doing all those meditations in a weekend, 
we reduce them to 10 meditations and, uh, and on the weekend, right? So it's more doable, but we have the... Um, it is clearly understood that that weekend has the main basic meditations to obtain a fruit that is cl the closest possible to the, um, the full retreat of the spiritual exercises in 30 days, right? Because the reality is that nobody would do the spiritual exercises today if they were only presented in a 30-day format, mm -hmm. uh, meaning 30 days secluded in some place uh, all the time in retreat. Mm -hmm. So the weekend retreats is what Miles Christi uh, is doing today, and some other orders are doing them too. Um, but in, if you look for spiritual exercises in the website, um, you can find all our dates for spiritual exercises in the U.S. We have like, right now it must be like 65 retreats in the whole U.S. So um, you type in, in the address MC, for me, Christi, mcactivities.com. And there you have all the states, all the dates for men, for women, for young men, for young women. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Good. So why should anyone go to or attend the spiritual exercises? First, they help us uh, grow in holiness. That is our vocation. We all, we all know that we have a common voc calling, let's say, to holiness. Um, and therefore, we have to do something to grow in, in holiness. And that's why the spiritual exercises um, are so useful. Second, it, they help us find the will of God each, in each stage of our life, to find the will of God for me, for my life, how, what that sanctity is for me. They help us um, reform our life, right? Some people are already trying to f find a life of holiness, grow in their spiritual life, but we need constant conversion, right? Uh, we cannot say, oh, I converted once and then that's it. No, we basically every day need to say, I did wrong, I need to change. I did wrong, I apologize, I'm trying, I'll try to do better. Every day, every day. So to have a retreat a year that make us, makes us see this uh, well and, uh, and help us to do that daily reform of life uh, is, is very important. To our, uproot our vices in an effective way and plant the virtues that God expects of us. And then they remind us that there is a spiritual combat mm -hmm. in our life. There is such thing as a spiritual fight, a warfare inside of us. And uh, if anyone thinks that that is not the case, right, everyone back there, you don't know, that you're, you know, we're teenagers, young, combat, warfare, spiritual, what? No, th there's nothing like that in my life. Well, that's because we don't realize that there is. Hmm? We don't, we haven't gotten to the point of recognizing that we should not be doing whatever we want to do, but we should be doing the will of God. Once we start doing, trying to do the will of God, then you will see that there's a combat, and a big one, right? Uh, from all sides, all right? Outside, inside, uh, everywhere. Right? There's a combat. Mm -hmm. And the devil doesn't sleep, and he wants to destroy us. So, to know that there's a spiritual combat, to know that we have to fight every day, and to have the tools to fight, that is what the spiritual exercises help us to see. Mm -hmm. Some other specific reasons why they are so beneficial to us today. First, because they help us see what is the purpose of man. Many people, I would say the majority of the people in the world, do not know that there's a purpose for them in life. That God has a purpose for you in this world. That he, he wants you alive to do something, whatever it may be. Hmm? One example that I, um, that I always think, what an amazing thing, right? Um, think of the Holy Father, right? He, when he, wa when he was elected, like a month before he was elected to be a Pope, right? He thought his life had ended, basically. Okay, now he's going to retire, right? Pope died. I was like Cardinal Congregation of Doctrine of the Faith. Now they're going to replace me. Now he was planning to go to Germany and read. <laughs> <laughs> and after that 
comes the most important portion of his life ever, because he's the successor of St. Peter now, the rock on which Christ built the church. And not only that, but the things that the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, has done and ha is enduring for the church. He would not have possibly imagined that that would have, be, would have been the most important moment of his life, right? The moment, section of his life, right? So, thank you. So, we see that, um, that the will of God presents itself um, in, in, in most different ways and that the purpose that we all have, that God has a purpose for each one of us, right? And we cannot say we do not have a purpose because the, the most important time of our lives could be two days from today. We don't know what that will be, you know. Um, but you can be sure that God has a purpose for you. Um, a second thing, they help us achieve a true conversion of heart. A serious, a serious uh, conversion of our hearts to God. And not just something outward or something, yes, we want to be, do better. No, a serious conversion of heart so that we truly take our lives seriously in the service of God. Another important uh, reason why they are so beneficial to us today is because they are permeated all throughout the retreat of the value and importance of the grace of God in our life. I've heard, and I, I don't know if this is common or not, but it seems to be somewhat common, that St. Ignatius of Loyola, that the Ignatian spirituality and that the spiritual exercises are uh, voluntaristic or something like that. Whatever that may mean, I won't enter into that. Um, but the basic thought that some people wrongly have is that St. Ignatius does not trust so much in the grace of God as in the power of our will. Well, that is not true, because if you take the spiritual exercises anywhere, in every meditation, you always have to ask the grace of God to do this meditation well. Every meditation is based on the grace of God that we need to do anything in our spiritual life. So, the awareness of that importance of the grace of God is uh, clearly shown when we do the spiritual exercises. Hmm? They also help us to do the, find the will of God in our life. They remind us that the devil exists, that there's this warfare and a combat, and therefore we have to be on guard and, and not fall asleep right, in our spiritual life. They remind us that we have received everything from God and therefore we are taught how to offer everything back to God in our life. They are a school of prayer. They help us discern the different spirits. There's the rules for discernment of spirits. That means of different movements that are produced in our soul by different reasons and causes. But we have these things inside and we have to discern where they come from to follow the good ones and to reject the bad ones. They are a school of prayer, and this is something that is normally not, not mentioned about the spiritual exercises. They, they teach us how to pray. And it's a school of prayer that has been endorsed by the magisterium of the church through an encyclical, and therefore why seek, uh, this is crazy, why seek weird oriental ways of prayer when we have in the spiritual exercises something that is taught by the, endorsed by the magisterium of the church and that has a, very, a great variety of ways of praying that we know are Catholic, right? That we know this is Catholic. So we have excellent means of prayer. So they're a school of prayer. They also teach us how to have a Catholic spirit. There's rules in the spiritual exercise, these rules of thinking with the church or rules to have the same mind of the Catholic faith, of the Catholic Church. So, they teach us how to be Catholic, basically, right? Um, and finally, uh, the understanding of the path to the perfect love of God. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that we see in the spiritual exercises. We're taught how to love God. Mm -hmm. So, some, Father Harden, that's why, that's why Father Harden gave such an importance to the spiritual exercises for all his apostles, for the Marian Catechists, for the real presence, for all, all the apostles that he had and all the lay people that he came in contact with, he always encouraged the spiritual exercise to, to participate in the spiritual exercises 
of St. Of Ignatius of Loyola. So he says, and I quote from Father Hardin, the spiritual exercises for Saint, of St. Ignatius for now over 400 years have been the proven means of sanctifying by now millions of what otherwise would have been ordinary Catholics to make the spiritual exercises means to spend a weekend, a full week, but preferably 30 full days, in meditating on the meditations of the spiritual exercises. They are nothing less than a divinely provide, provided means of performing moral miracles in changing ordinary Catholics into heroic Catholics, the kind that are needed to re-Christianize the world. So he says, talks about moral miracles, and with this we're about to finish. A moral miracle is a greater miracle than the resurrection of the dead, if you want. Like, I go and rise this dead, not the resurrection of the dead of the last, uh, uh, at the final judgment. I'm saying, suppose there's a dead body, and I come, and I rise this person from the dead, and then to a, a, a human, normal life. Well, the conversion of a person of a sinner of a, or of a lukewarm Catholic into a heroic Catholic that he says is a moral miracle, that is a greater miracle. Because that depends on the free will of that person that, we, that God has to change through some channel. So the conversion of a soul is a greater miracle than any other physical miracle that you can see, hmm? because uh, again, those others are from a natural order, right? This person had a broken hand and now it's cured. Well, this person was a sinner and now he's a saint, hmm? or he's trying to be a saint. That's a great, great miracle, and that's what the spiritual exercises can provide. <laughs> and then a last quote of Father Hardin to um, endorse seven main features, according to Father Hardin, that are very good of the spiritual exercises. First, he says, what I call making a spiritual inventory of our lives. Right? To have a spiritual inventory, inventory sorry, uh, what we have to change, what we have to acquire, and so forth. Uh, virtues and, and vices. Secondly, recognizing we have got a true interior freedom of the will. To do one thing, what, why do we have freedom? We are given freedom to do the will of God freely. Right? To do what is good. Third, in God's providence we are to be channels of grace to others. And that we see through the spiritual exercises. Fourth, to obtain what St. Ignatius calls the third degree of humility, that is, the desire to embrace any suffering and even any humiliation simply to do the will of God. Right, to glorify God and for his love. Fifth, to accept the Bishop of Rome as the vicar of Christ and the vicar of truth. We know only as much as God's revealed truth as we accept the authority of the Bishop of Rome. Sixth, important feature, a deep, strong love of the cross. And finally, how sin is part of, the God, of, of God's providence in our life. Right? How, to, how through sin, God can bring about our humbling and therefore our conversion. Right? So these are the things that Father Harden um, encourages or highlights of the spiritual exercises. So, um, I, yes, we're, in we're on time. And um, I will offer briefly, right, uh, because there's no more time, what I'll do is, if anyone of the young people here, right, uh, if anyone wants to ask me a question about the spiritual life or anything about your vocation or how to find the will of God or what God may want, so forth, um, there's a, uh, there will be some cards there. We'll leave them in the back. Uh, so you just uh, put your name, right, and your, uh, your question and just basically uh, indicate that you would like to speak to Father Patrick, and I'll be here uh, for some moments, and then once that is ready, we'll, I'll, I'll call you if you stay, stick around, okay? So thank you very much. I think we're on time, so we'll say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 
We give thee thanks, Almighty God, for these and all thy benefits, who livest and reignest forever and ever. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the other spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you very much. And